drop your blood pressure. Hi, Dr. Rice. Hi, Mrs. Hyper. How can I help you today? I was just wanting to get a general checkup. Okay, well, we'll start off by taking your blood pressure first. Okay. Hmm. It's about 150 over 110. That's quite high. I'm going to have to put you on an ACE inhibitor. ACE inhibitors are one of the most frequently used classes of antihypertensive drugs. They have several additional clinical indications, including cardiovascular disease, as well as diabetic and non-diabetic renal neuropathies. There are a number of different ACE inhibitors currently available on the market. Captopril was the first to be synthesized and is unique to other ACE inhibitors due to its short half-life. The majority of ACE inhibitors contain a carboxyl group, while only one approved drug contains a phosphenyl group, namely fosinopril. Most ACE inhibitors are eliminated by the kidneys. For this reason, dose reductions are required in patients with impaired renal function. The majority of ACE inhibitors are prodrugs that become activated once distributed to the liver. That's really interesting. But how does an ACE inhibitor actually work? The term ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme, an enzyme which plays an important role in both the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and the calocrine kinin system. Firstly, let's look at the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Normally, when there is a drop in blood pressure, then renin is released from the juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney. Renin then converts angiotensinogen, a protein made in the liver, to angiotensin 1. As angiotensin 1 reaches the pulmonary system, ACE converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Here we can see the number of physiological effects that angiotensin 2 elicits. Firstly, it increases sympathetic activity so the heart muscle contracts with more force, leading to higher peripheral resistance. It also increases the reabsorption of sodium and chloride and excretion of potassium in the kidney tubules, which increases blood volume and raises blood pressure. This also occurs via the secretion of aldosterone from the adrenal glands. Blood vessels are constricted, resulting in an increase in peripheral resistance. And finally, antidiuretic hormone is released, which reabsorbs more water from the collecting ducts, so blood volume increases. ACE inhibitors were created to block these effects by competitively binding to the enzyme ACE, resulting in an overall drop in blood pressure. ACE is also involved in the calocrine kinin system by acting as a catalyst for the degradation of the active peptide bradykinin. When an ACE inhibitor is given to a patient, there will be an accumulation of bradykinin. Bradykinin stimulates the production of nitric oxide, which promotes vasodilation of blood vessels. In the kidney, bradykinin promotes naturesis, which is the excretion of sodium, by acting directly on the tubules. This also plays a role, role in decreasing blood pressure. Angiotensin II also has a role in inhibiting the production of tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA, thus inhibiting the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin for fibrinolysis. Conversely, if an ACE inhibitor is present, the production of plasmin forgoes, and blood clots are dissolved. So ACE inhibitors are not only used clinically as antihypertensives, but they can be used to prevent the formation of blood clots. Clinically, ACE inhibitors are used in the treatment of primary hypertension and hypertension caused by renal artery stenosis. They are also used in the management of hypertension in patients with type 1 diabetes. One of the advantages of ACE inhibitors is that they lower peripheral vascular resistance without causing a compensatory increase in heart rate, unlike other vasodilators such as calcium channel blockers. However, some studies have shown that ACE inhibitors are less effective in the treatment of African Americans. They are also used to stop the progression of congestive heart failure in patients with left ventricular systolic dysfunction, to prevent a secondary ischemic event following a myocardial infarction, and in diabetics without hypertension as they block the progression of renal impairment. They are often used in conjunction with other antihypertensive drugs including diuretics and angiotensin receptor blockers to improve their effectiveness. So are there any side effects that I should know about before taking an ACE inhibitor? Mrs. Hyper, unfortunately ACE inhibitors aren't completely ACE and there are some side effects. The most common side effect of ACE inhibitors is a dry cough, which affects about 20% of patients. This is related to the elevation of bradykinin. Other adverse effects are rare but can be fatal. This includes hypertension, hyperkalemia caused by decreased aldosterone, and angioedema which is characterised by the swelling and obstruction of airways. Although ACE inhibitors can slow the progression of neuropathies, they can also cause a reversible decline in renal function in some patients, especially those with bilateral renal artery stenosis. They are therefore contraindicated in this situation. Pregnant women should also not take ACE inhibitors as they cause teratogenicity, especially in the second and third trimester. 
Other side effects include headache, dizziness, fatigue, nausea and skin rash. So does the future look bright for ACE inhibitors? Clinical studies will focus on their role in the prevention of cardiovascular disease in people with normal blood pressure, on comparing the efficacy of ACE inhibitors to AT1 receptor antagonists, the extent that characteristics such as race and ACE genotype affect responses to ACE inhibitors, and finally, ways to overcome the adverse side effects associated with ACE inhibitors. A few studies have already looked at the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for managing cough, 